Hi, my name is Brandon. I'm a customer support specialist and developer here with MyDoc365, and welcome to our series of SharePoint tips. This video will be part two of my two-part instructional video where I show you how to make a mobile application that connects to both SharePoint and to Microsoft Flow to make a simple item submission approval process. So you'll see that I'm already started out right here on this application that we finished up in Power Apps last time. Um, it doesn't submit to the actual flow yet, but it does submit to this approval list and makes a status of waiting item and it won't get approved or denied because we haven't done the flow part yet. So that's what this will be. So, and we'll be putting that in the submit button. So first things first, you can make a flow under action and flows right here, but I like to just go straight into flow and do it from there. So I'm going to go to new and create from blank to make a new flow. And once I do that, I'll connect it in here. So when I choose a connector, I'll just search for Power Apps. And I have it started right here. And once I finish this up, I'll just connect it in there. It'll be really simple. So the first step I'm going to want to make is I'm going to want to send an email with options. And that will be right here. That's going to be to the approver that we have in here. It's going to be from the user in here and the information in the email is going to come from this item right here. So I'll go ahead and go back to here and we want to send this to our approver. So we don't have that information already. We're going to have to ask for that from Power Apps. The subject, I'm just going to make it say your approval is required. Simple. And for our options, I'm going to keep it simple and just do approve and deny. But if you want to, you could add more options. You could have it say request resubmission or something like that. Um, but for simplicity's sake, I'll just keep it this way. And you don't want to do the next step yet. Uh, you're going to want to do advanced options if you want to edit the body of the email, which I definitely want to do. So, um, especially because you don't want to just send an email to someone that says your approval is required and then they just approve or deny, they have to be able to see this item that you've submitted. So what information are they going to want to see? They're going to want to see the title and description of it, and they're probably going to want to see who submitted it. So first thing, I'll say someone has submitted oops, an item for your approval. And for that, I'll just ask in Power Apps who that person is because we don't have that information yet. That's going to be the person using the app. And I'll go ahead and put the title of the item and the description of the item right here. So under title, again, I'm going to have to ask for that from Power Apps because we don't have that information anywhere else yet. And under description, I will ask for that too. So this email will just say my user Joe Joseph has submitted an item for your approval and the title is going to be whatever we put in here. The description in the email is going to be whatever we put in here. Simple as that. And now this email is going to have some steps and based on those steps we'll do the next thing. So if you did decide to use more than two steps in here you're going to want to use a switch because that'll make your life a lot easier. And what that does is you're just going to have whatever value it is, which would be um, the selected option, and you're going to want to choose what that equals. So I would choose approve for the first one, and then I would add another case in here, and I would do deny, add another case in here, do request resubmission, whatever I want to do for that. But I'm actually not going to use a switch because I only have two conditions, so I'll just go ahead and use a true false conditional. Just again for simplicity's sake, so 
I'll select condition and under that I'm going to want to do the output of this email which is selected option and that selected option is going to be equal to either approve or deny so let's say if it's equal to approve then this is going to be when it's equal to approve and when it's not equal to approve it's going to be deny so this will be deny and all we have to do after that is just update the item based off of which option they choose so we're actually going to do the same thing in both of these just with different um, statuses for the item so we'll want to do update item in SharePoint right here and in here we'll also want to do update item in SharePoint and for our site address you're going to want to go to the list you have and I did this in the last video you copy the URL for the list up to the subsite and go back to the flow and you're going to want to do enter custom value because I'll show you if you paste it in here and then try to go away it's just going to delete it and say that it's not one of these so do enter custom value paste your URL in there choose your approval list and I'll do that for this side too while I'm at it because again these are going to be the same thing this is going to be updating the item to approve it this is going to be updating the item to deny it and let me actually change that right here already so this is approved this is denied for the status of the item after they choose it now the item ID we don't have the item ID anywhere else in our flow yet so we're going to need to ask for that from Power Apps also and for the title we actually do have the title in here if you go back to our email we said the title of the item over here so we can use the same title that way we don't have to send more parameters than we have to over to Microsoft Flow and these are actually going to be the same for these two emails just like everything else so this is going to be the item ID this is going to be the send email with options for body one and after that I don't really have anything else that I want to update in the list if you did want to update it based off something else or update anything else you could but this looks pretty good for now so with all these configured I think our flow is pretty much ready to test so uh, I'm gonna keep this open so that we can reference these parameters when we're trying to fill it out in Power Apps because it's not exactly easy to remember these names but uh, before I do that, I'm going to want to rename this. So I'm going to name this uh, approval item flow. And I'll save it. And as soon as this is saved, you can use it in your app. So I'll go back to my Power App. And if you don't see it in here, you could always refresh it. But I do see it right here. So I'm going to add this. And something weird about adding flows in Power Apps is that when you do add a flow, it'll delete whatever your on visible or on start or whatever property is in here and replace it with this, um, just so that you can fill it out faster, I guess. But I don't want to put it in on visible, I want to put it in the on submit. So I'm going to go ahead and just undo that and it will change it back to this, but it will still keep my flow. It's not going to show up in here, it'll show up if you go to view. And if you go to data sources, you can confirm that that flow is right in there still. So that's right in there. All right, so now that we've created our flow, you c again, you can create it from here. It's just, uh, you're gonna have to refresh the app if you do that. And um, you'll see it in here after you add it. After we do that, it's just as simple as adding it to our submit button. Now I could go ahead and add it right here, but the problem is, we're going to be using the data that we submit from the form after we submit it because you can't go in and find an item that hasn't been submitted yet. So the way this is going to work is we're going to submit the item, we're going to change it with this flow, and then we're going to start this new form right here because otherwise that's going to throw off our um, little code in here to start this flow. So right in here, we're going to want to do approval item flow and run that. And I'm just going to go ahead and close off this parenthesis here so that we don't mess up this right here. And in here, it shows us all the parameters we have to do. So 
it says who we're sending it to and it gives us the three body ones that we have and it has the item ID. So that's going to be who we're sending it to, who the person using the app is, what the title of it is, what the description of it is, and the item ID. All right, so who are we sending it to? We're sending it to the approver. So if we want to use the data that was last submitted in this form, there's actually a code for that in Power Apps. You just type in the name of the form and you type in last submit. And then you can use any of the pieces of data in that item that was last submitted. So when I submit that item to my SharePoint list in here, it'll have all these values. And those are the values that we're using in the last submit um, code. So what I'm gonna want to be submitted is whatever's in this approver category. So I'm gonna say the approver and what we want from them is their email because we're trying to send this to the approver. So our first one is form one last submit approver email and that's gonna go right into here and that's for sending them the email. After that, our next one, if we look, that is the user of the app now you can get the email or the name of the person using the application pretty easily. You just type in user and use any of the parameters from that. You can get their profile picture, their name, or their email. Uh, we need their name and that's what we'll be passing to this. So when we email them, it's going to say Jojo Joseph and it's going to say they have submitted an item for your approval. And if uh, another side note that I want to make is this user code, it will have to go and check what the user is every single time it runs. That's something that if you're using the user in your Power Apps application a lot, you're going to want to set it equal to a variable. So what a lot of people will do is they'll say like set uh, current user equal to and then this user. And then once you do that, you could just have it say current user dot full name or whatever you name it. But for now, we're just going to use this as a user one for simplicity's sake and because we're only using it when we hit the submit button. So that's the user. Now these next two the, are the other two in the body. That's going to be the title and the description. And the last one's going to be the ID. So title, description, and ID. We can just go ahead and copy this form one dot last submit because the rest of our parameters are going to come from this form. The next one is the title. So form one last submit title. And the one after that is the description. Form one last submit description. And I'm I'm not saying the periods, but um, it's just really simple. Form one dot last submit dot title. Um, form one last submit description and the ID. Now the ID isn't something that I made in this app. I, I, I hit it in this app, um, but that's something that's standard on every SharePoint list. So uh, a lot of flows um, actions will ask you for what the ID of an item is. So it's something a good to, it's it's something that's good to keep in mind if you um, want to be able to use your items. You can just throw in the ID and get that specific item that way. So now we've passed in our approver's email, our name, the title, the description, and the ID of the item. And that's all our flow needs in order to get this working. So let's go ahead and test it. Again, this submit button is going to submit it run our workflow with all of our information and then start a new form. So what that will look like for us is we'll type in all our information, submit it, it'll show up in here, and this will start running, but then it will wait for our response from our email. And after we give that response, it'll finish up. So let's go ahead and test that. For title, just gonna do test, description, same thing. Approver, I'm gonna choose my user so that I um, don't have to wait for someone else to approve it. And I'll go ahead and submit this. All right, now it's made this new form. It looks like it worked. So 
if we go into our list, we should see, yep, test, it's waiting. It's got the right description, got the right approver. Now if we go to the flow, if we go back here, I'll save it just in case, but I believe I already saved it. If we go back here, we should see that it's running and it hasn't completed yet because it is waiting for our response from the email. So if I go into my user's email, I have this, it's asking me to approve or deny it. You can see it's the right title and description and user. This is the email that we sent. I'm gonna go ahead and approve it. If we go back here, bam, finishes real quick. If you look in here, just change to approve and that's it. It's um, simple once you get the hang of it. It's a little bit of complex things in there, especially with this um, thing right here, but as long as you're paying attention to what's in here and the order of what you're seeing in your flow, you can just follow whatever you see with what you've typed in here, match that on here, and you should be good to go. So uh, that was part two of this instructional video. I hope you liked it and I hope you get some good use out of it. If you like this video or if you uh, got use out of it, please like or give a share if you feel the need to. And um, other than that, thank you so much for watching.